All right, hello and welcome. Um, so this video is going over my final project for Game Development 1. Um, just fair warning, I am not an artist by any means, but I decided to go that route and I've done virtually, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the artwork has been done by me. Um, using Photoshop and uh, so forth and you know other programs and whatnot um, the only things that I have not done is the actual UI graphics um, I, I cannot take the credit for those um, those were done by somebody else I captured the grabbed the images off the internet um, so forth and so on um, going on this is a 2D platformer once again. Um, it's uh, my characters are Viking, um, so it's got a Viking feel to it. This is yes, it's my final project, but at the same time, it is very much a prototype game. There are a lot of bugs and glitches and um, issues with it um, that I, you know, I know it's not a fully polished you know, video game that you buy off the showroom or off the, the store shelf, um, or get off of steam or something like that. Uh, other things, I uh, can't really think of anything. So, uh, I guess without anything else, let's get into it. Wait for it to catch up. There we go. Alright, so uh, this is your main menu, obviously. Um, select level, uh, just because I've played it several times, so level 2 is unlocked. But normally level 2 would be locked, uh, so you can't actually click on level 2 unless you've passed level 1. Um, and I'm misspelling there. Good job. All right. So once again, you know, little things here and there. Every time I play this, I find something else. Um, it's it's one of those um, like a typical coding issue. You you fix one issue and you create 34 more. Um, so uh, getting back into. It. Uh, level select will take you to one of your levels. Uh, obviously, as the game progresses, um, I will be, at, or I can add, can and probably will be eventually adding more levels to this game um, and just polishing, just polishing it and making it better. Um, the this is not a game that was done by, you know some graphic artist that has knowledge and all of this stuff and um or i don't have a team of people to to develop this game so um quick down and dirty type of game uh getting into the game itself click new game all right here we go uh we are currently in level one um this is your main player character he can walk he can jump superhumanly. This is actually a glitch or uh, um, an error. Um, I can even double jump. Uh, the second jump is actually correct. First jump is not. Um, I can sprint. I can crawl sometimes. Once again, another issue. There it is. You have to be moving forward in order to to crawl. So it's just a matter of my calling on you know when to crawl that I need to to figure out whatnot. So if you notice, I picked up one collectible, uh, the silver uh, cup, um, and it is marked up here in the top right hand corner. I do have a health bar instead of the individual hearts that were on the midterm or anything. And I'm still missing an object right here in the top left-hand corner. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 
My I picked up an axe also, and I also picked up a heart. The heart is my health. Um, it will regenerate your health because my enemies do do quite a bit of damage, and I need needed some sort of health system throughout the game. Uh, the axe you can. There it goes. Um, pull out or you can put away. There are different functions that you can do with the axe in hand than and without the axe. So depending on whether you're in combat mode or non-combat mode, there are different things that you can do in each one. Um, the snakes that are, you know, like this guy right here. Uh, smash it from this side. The snakes don't move, and I did this on purpose, and I'll show you why later on. But the snakes don't actually move. The, the sprite just flips back and forth uh, periodically. And they cannot die. Um, so if you notice, I can die, but they cannot. I cannot kill them. But they can kill me. And death animation and game over. I lost. All right, cool. Go back into level one. Alright, there's your silver, there's your axe, there's your heart. Alright. Superhuman jump. Now, when I pull the axe out, it fixes my jump. I don't know why, but it does. So, this is my second enemy that you come into contact with. Uh, he does have a animation and everything. Um, and he will kill you. Uh, they take uh, two hit points, or uh, they deal two hit points worth of damage. Um, I only deal one. Uh, at a later date, I plan on implementing more weapons uh, to give higher damage. Um, if you notice, I just picked up a key. Um, the key will be used at the end of the level. The reason for the biggest reason for the snakes not moving and not dying, being able to die or be killed, is because my pits instead of having a uh, instead of having a just a pit with a you know death plane at the bottom of it, you know nothing fancy. You just fell down this hole and died. Um, or the other option that I've seen a lot of is you know you've got the spikes at the bottom of your pit and you fall on the spikes and you die. I wanted something a little different. I wanted the actual enemy to to be down there killing you. So that's why I created the snakes. Um, and that's why I've got them set up the way they are. So the snakes are what actually kills you. Um, so let's try and make it through the level now. Um, the, the game is actually fairly difficult to to accomplish even though the uh the things you know the the animations might not look great the the art doesn't look great the uh the coding and scripting for it isn't you know perfect and so forth and so on um i've got it set up to where it's actually kind of difficult to play um to an extent and I did that on purpose because you know I I hate easy games um, I think most people are in that situation unless you're trying to um, play like a, a farm sim game or something like that where it's just kind of chilled and relaxed back uh, there's you, know, you gotta have some sort of challenge to it um, and I think I've done a decent job at that for what it is. Once again, it's not great, but it is what it is. <clears throat> so, moving on down the level. Skip through this, some of this stuff here. Kind of run past the enemies to get past to the. Ah. Uh, 
you can sometimes get out of there if you're good enough. Um, you hit the, you, you, you smash that jump button enough. All of the crates in the level are destructible. Um, and yeah. Now, the final enemy in each one of the two levels that I've designed here, um, you know, your normal uh, Viking enemies do two points of hit, uh, two hit points of damage to your player. Um, your final enemy is more or less your boss, and he does four if he. He's not hitting me. So um, the the final boss enemy is usually a, a bit harder to, to kill. Um, that's what the key unlocks. The key unlocks the treasure chest at the end of the level. Um, treasure chest then triggers your next level. So, got my axe here. Kill these guys. Now, the second level here, I wanted more of a maze style, I guess. Um, come on. There you go. Um, yeah, I, I didn't want the good old fashioned traditional, um, you know, uh, Mario style uh, level to it. So. That's why I went with more of a maze style. So I have it zoomed in, you know, to where you can't really see a whole lot of what's going on around. And so the player is more or less just kind of guessing at where they're going until they figure out where they need to go. Um, luckily, I know where I need to go. So, um,. Put my axe away. Get through this little tunnel here. Uh, there are a couple of other things, you know, throughout the the game and or throughout this level that. Uh, I'm not going to run through just because if I get stuck on it, it's going to take me forever to get through. Um, and it's more or less a challenge. This is actually one of those parts. So you've got two, uh, two silver cups here. Uh, that is a goal. There's also more treasure down in this pit. Obviously, I can't hit and destroy these ob these crates because they're too far down so I have to come through here and destroy all of these and then drop down this hole there's also a bunch of enemies down there but once you drop down well let's see if I can do it you have to be strategic about which crates to hit and destroy in order to get things so obviously I can't go through there uh, I might have just and you can't jump on the crates I, I might have just screwed myself yep I did so yeah, you, you've got to be strategic on how you hit the crates and so forth and so on. It can be done. I have done it. Um, it's just you got to time time your, your axe strike perfectly in the middle of a jump um, in order to smash the right box. And then afterwards, you can come back through and you can smash these bottom ones. To get your cup but that way you have a set of essentially stairs 
wonder if I can get... No, I can't. Otherwise, there's no way of getting out of here. So, I guess I'll show you the pause menu. Um, pause menu here, you know, obviously resume takes you back. The menu takes you back to the main, main menu, which you can go back and to your level select and choose level two and start over. So, but that, that one section of this is, is very challenging. Um, and like, it, it took me a while the first time I accomplished it. Um, I really liked the idea and the concept behind it. So it was one of those, you know, I have to do it. I have to figure out a way to make it work. Um, and I might adjust that later on, uh, adding a mechanic to where I can actually jump on the crates and jump off of the crates. Uh, it wouldn't be difficult to do that. But as of right now, uh, yeah, that's this is where it's at. Um, so if you if you want to get a hundred percent of the silver throughout the level, the only way to do that is if you really get good at uh, picking your your crates that you smash and your boxes that you smash to uh, to get through there. So if anybody wants to play this um, in my class or whatever, you know, and have a if you have access to the build um, and you think you are good enough, by all means, uh, try it. See if you are good enough. I have done it. It, it is doable. It's just really difficult, and it took me several hours to to get it just right. So, fair warning. Uh, kind of running through here a little bit quicker. This is the bottom of that area, so you can, at one point in time, you can see everything in that area. What? So it's, none of the area is really a mystery to you, uh, to the player, if they're observant and, uh, Yeah. So once again, you have the snakes. They uh, they do not move, but they will kill you. So um, that's why these platforms are up here. You can, and I have, just ran through here. But you take a lot of damage, and if you're going to uh, defeat the final boss, uh, you you need as much damage as you as you can get, or health as you can get, because basically um, at the end of the level, the final boss, uh, two hits and you're dead. If he hits you twice, you're dead. Um, once again, here's another uh, kind of tricky spot. Um, you can go to the left and you can fall in there. You can't, you can't get back up here though. If you go to the left, um, so, but there is more treasure down there. Um, there's more enemies down that direction and everything. Um, so that is an option. If you want hundred percent silver, you're going to have to explore it. Not only that, not knowing the map, most people are going to want to explore it. But if you go that way, you have to come all the way back around. It basically takes you all the way back to the beginning of the level. Um, and I did that on purpose so that um, at a later date, uh, when I am done polishing and you know making the finalized version of this game, um, when you go down there, the, the uh, whole aspect of it, as soon as you go down there, oh, excuse me, it's going to trigger a mechanism that will spawn more enemies. Um, so even though you're going back through the map and playing it all over again, uh, you're going to have more enemies and they're going to be in different positions, um, different strengths, 
even some different enemies that I've already got built and pre-made in the game. Um, I just haven't been able to implement them yet. So, uh, it's just something a little different that, uh, you know, I, I was playing around with and trying to, trying to get to work. So, uh, come on, die. These top boxes are a little kind of a pain in the butt to smash. You got to hit them just right. Um, because of my collisions and whatnot, and the tunnels are so close. But as you can see, it, it is doable. Um, now this, we're coming into the, the final part, uh, the final part. That's why there's so much health right here. Um, is I wanted to give the player the opportunity and hopefully the, come on, um, the ability to actually kill this guy and not die every time. But as you can see, I was able to do it and yeah, once again, unlock the crate and Plays a little no, uh, tune, yay, you won, and takes you back to the menu. So, that is my 2D platformer game at this point in time. Um, it, it, is a, it is a finished game. It is a working game. It does work. All the aspects are there, all the UI... Um, the player, the health, so forth and so on. All that is there. Um, it's not a polished game, though. Um, I do plan on, you know, maybe not next week, but in the future, I'm planning on revisiting some of these as some of these games um, aspects and everything. Uh, you know, I want to. I actually want to take all my sprites and. Uh, do 10 times more animations um, on them. So, you know, th this is definitely a work in progress that I'm going to tweak on probably over the next probably several years um, before I'll actually call it finished. Um, but as far as this class goes, uh, it is finished. <laughs> so, uh, I hope you all enjoyed and thank you. And uh, have a wonderful day.